Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to our fifth uh, workshop in the Embrace the Open series. Uh, NOL members, uh, our librarians in the European network of open educational librarians, are facilitating a series of workshops in order to allow anyone interested uh, in upskilling. Um, about uh, how to deal with OER. We started last year with uh, open textbooks, but uh, this year we restarted somehow, helping participants to build the basic skills around uh, open educational resources. And uh, we started with uh, workshop number four last month. You can find all the recordings and all the materials in our channels, and I will give you uh, links to them by the end of these workshops too. Today, it's the, first, the fifth appointment, and uh, we are talking about uh, finding OER, where to find them, how to choose them, etc. And uh, I'm happy to have here uh, with me Evi Tremanza from American College of Thessaloniki and Anatolia College in Greece, and uh, Catherine Briggs from the Atlantic Technological University in Galway, Ireland. Uh, thank you for uh, being facilitating this workshop, the two of you. And Evie, if you could move to the next slide. Happy Education Week to all and every one of you. I'm very happy that we succeeded in having an event during the Open Education Week because it's uh, an appointment that is really useful and uh, really um, participated uh, by the Open Education community worldwide. So I we invite you to go and explore the website and uh, look at all the resources that are there. So next slide, please. <laughs> So as I said, our facilitators are two wonderful librarians who never worked together before, actually. So it's a pleasure for me to, to have you here today, happy and smiling, uh, thanks to this experience that you did. Uh, I think that uh, I have nothing to add at this point, uh, except uh, good luck and uh, thank you for having all of us today. The floor is yours. Thank you. So next, um, AV. Um, thanks, Paolo, and thanks for everyone for joining us today and for those that are going to catch up with the recording. So today we will talk about what type of OER, open educational resources, you can find online, identifying relevant repositories and other sources, applying effective search strategies, exploring existing finding aids and search tools, and recognise where to go to get help from the community. Next. In this workshop, you will identify different types of OER and repositories, search for OER effectively, specifying criteria and formats, learn from and engage with the community, and share finding OER experiences, highlighting what worked and what didn't. So it's going to be a quite informal workshop. We will be using Answer Garden and Padlet for real-time audience participation, and we would really appreciate your engagement. Don't worry, there's no right or wrong answers and responses will be anonymous unless you decide otherwise. And we're not going the whole way through um, the hour and a half without giving you a break to stretch your legs. So don't worry about that. Um, so next, please. Um, here's a brief recap of what was covered in the previous workshop. So as Paolo mentioned, it was the first of the OER and it introduced open education librarianship. Um, identifying criteria to help recognize high quality OER collections, presenting practical approaches to planning for OER, summarizing Creative Commons licenses, and discussed opportunities for librarians to contribute to open education. And for those that missed it, it is on our Enroll for Open uh, YouTube channel. Now, of course, there will be some mention of some of those topics in today's workshop as we continue to embrace the open. Okay, AP. Okay, so I would like us to start with a warm up activity to get to know each other. It will be great to see who is in the room with us today. So please take some time to post in this link, share it in the chat. And my question is who are you? Where are you connecting from? What is your role? This is an answer garden question. If you have not seen this before, it's very easy to engage. You just click on the link and then you type in your answer in the box. Um, I would like you to 
uh, put the, the, your, uh, the, your three answers together. So who you are, where you're connecting from, what you're always in the same post and then enter. So let's see. Let's see if, um, if people, and Paola, could you add this link in the chat? I'm not able to see. Yes, I think it's in the chat, yes. Great, yes, so yeah. don't be shy, everybody, just type in. Yeah, just I know it's three screen. answers. Yeah. Oh, thank you, yeah, very good idea. Um, oh, there you are, okay, okay. Fantastic. Let me see if I have any more. Um, Irish people, yeah. Okay, <laughs> great to see you here. Yeah. Um, from Poland, lovely. Please keep um keep adding your answers here. Thank you. All right, all right. Um, okay, I'm gonna give it another few seconds here and then um, we will move on. Thank you for sharing everyone. Let me just refresh one more time. Okay. Yes, people since from the Germany, number of characters is limited, Denmark. maybe you want to post your replies divided into three pieces. It's okay anyway. Yes, yeah, it is. Thank you. Thank you for sharing everyone. We have lots of librarians here anyway, because the librarians are the, is the biggest in the middle. Yes, so, we, yeah. and we have That's Slovakia we as well, Denmark, yeah. Italy. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yes, Welcome. great, great. Welcome, everyone. Um, okay, we will start with this section, which will offer us a brief explanation of open educational resources, which we call OER. Um, let us start with the UNESCO definition. Open educational resources, OERs, are learning, teaching, and research materials in any format and medium that reside in the public domain or under copyright that have been released under an open license that permit no cost access, reuse, repurpose, adaptation, and redistribution by others. The 2018 UNESCO recommendation on open educational resources, OERs, talked about supporting universal access to information through quality open learning materials. OERs were described as a unique tool to foster learning and knowledge sharing, which are necessary for equitable knowledge societies and support them in achieving the sustainable development goals. OERs are part of the open movement with two types of licenses, either in the public domain or licensed with free and perpetual permissions to retain, reuse, revise, remix, and redistribute. Open license was also defined in the same document and refers to a license that respects the educational, the intellectual property rights of the copyright owner and provides permissions granting the public um, the rights to access, reuse, repurpose, adapt, and redistribute educational materials. Now, as educators in the academic sector, we all play an important role as knowledgeable stakeholders in supporting the OER efforts in our institutions. We can do so by educating ourselves on OER, teaching OER in our communities, offering training, offering support, creating useful resources, and marketing and promoting of OERs, also networking with other OER practitioners. Um, so why are OER important in education? Many qualities have been associated with OERs. You can see them on the screen, equity, inclusion, easy access everywhere, quality, flexibility, variety of multiple learning materials, reduced or no cost, student participation, student dependent learning, support and innovation, ability to adapt to student needs, and so many more. When we discuss and promote OERs in our environments, it is important to share with our institutions, with lecturers and students, the global positive impact OERs have in education. Sharing these qualities mentioned here is important because our stakeholders are not only potential users of OERs, 
but also, very importantly, potential contributors of OER and other open initiatives as open access, open pedagogy, etc. Uh, what I most appreciate in the qualities of OER is the value of equity and inclusion for our students, and also the fact that OER support their ability to succeed. I also see this as an opportunity for libraries to lead in developments in OER in our institutions. Um, you may ask, Okay, so what types of content should we expect to find in OER repositories? What is available? These, uh, these in the slide are some of the types you will encounter. Uh, a list of educational materials one can expect to find in repositories. This list was identified in the OER Commons um, material types and is representative of what is available. You can find similar lists in repositories of OERs. Having a list of types of materials available in repositories can help you and lecturers understand the types of content they, uh, they can have access to and you can have access to. Um, Penn State um, University um, explains the benefits of OERs. Uh, they talk about increased access to education. This is about the availability of educational resources to learners globally, because they allow individuals, OERs allow individuals with limited access, maybe from remote areas or under resourced places to access content. Um, scalability. This means that they are easily distributed to a large number of students without costs. Supplementation of class materials. So OER can supplement um, lacking traditional materials um, like textbooks. So if a textbook doesn't cover a certain topic, the lecturer can supple supplement it with articles, videos, um, or interactive simulations from OER repositories. Um, also enrichment of course content. For example, a biology lecturer might use um, the main textbook but also they can also include virtual dissections, interactive diagrams, animations, etc., to help students understand complex biology concepts. Um, rapid dissemination. It is about quickly sharing educational resources with students and others. A lecturer can develop lecture slides, quizzes, reading materials for a course, and also publish them as OERs. And for example, it could be in Merlot, by doing so, they immediately become available to other lecturers and students globally without um, the delays that we usually see in the publishing process. Uh, showcasing innovation and ex expertise. This offers an opportunity to faculty members, research and teaching um, to be viewed um, widely by students, colleagues, and also collaborators. So a professor can share, for example, videos on cutting edge topics in their field. Uh, engagement with alumni. We know that universities offer free um, online courses or webinars to alumni, um, an opportunity to stay connected uh, with um, uh, alumni, uh, these people's alma mater, and also uh, continue to learn. Continuous improvement. So educational resources undergo revisions um, based on suggestions from instructors and from uh, students and users. And in this way, they remain accurate and up to date. So lecturers um, can immediately access high quality OER materials, can adapt them for their needs. They can share them with students without copyright restrictions and without fees. Um, now it is time for another brief activity. And my question here is, how would you describe OER in one word? I uh, would like you to, um, would like your view about OER. So please enter your answers again here. Um, and let me show you um, the screen. And I would say democratic. What would you say in one word or a small phrase maybe? And I will need to remember to refresh here so that we can see your answers. Okay, beautiful, reusable, flexible, open access, inclusive. 
Absolutely. Thank you. Um, creativity set free. I love this. Available for all. Yeah. Welcoming. Yes. Generous. Beautiful. Thank you, everyone. Open for changes. Great. Education done right. <laughs> yes. Open for feedback. Fantastic. Great. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, everyone. I'm going to leave it open just for a minute so that everybody reads the answers. Great. Beautiful, beautiful ideas here. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, okay. Um, the, uh, the five R's... <clears throat> We often hear of the five R's of OERs. Uh, they're here on the screen, but um, what do they mean? So reuse, a uh, content can be reused in its unaltered original formats. Reuse means in the classroom, with students, in groups, online, in a video. Uh, retain, so copies of content can be retained for personal um, archives or reference. Retain means download, store, duplicate, etc. Uh, revise, content can be modified or altered to suit specific needs. Um, revise, which is adapting, translating, etc. Remix, content can be adapted with other similar content to create something new. So remix is to use in combination with other content. Redistribute, content can be shared with anyone else in its original or altered format. So, so redistribute means sharing all the above. Thanks. So OER form part of open solutions alongside free and open source software, open access and open data and have been recognized to support the free flow of information and knowledge. UNESCO OER recommendations support the creation, access, reuse, repurpose, adaption, and redistribution of inclusive and equitable quality OER for all to improve the quality and relevance of education and learning. Education institutions and programs should be sufficiently and equitably resourced using learner-centered, active, and collaborative pedagogical approaches and books, other learning materials, OER and technology that are non-discriminatory, learner-friendly, context-specific, cost-effective and of course available for all. Next. So AV has already highlighted um, the benefits for OER in education and um, why use OER. This comes from our NO toolkit. So starting from the top and working clockwise, knowledge can be shared at large by unlocking educational resources through licenses for anyone interested. Educational resources created with public taxes are available to the public, reusable and shareable. Being up to date and providing continuous learning is more affordable for everyone, which bridges the gap between formal, informal and non-formal education opportunities. Free online resources make it easier to deliver the same knowledge to everyone, regardless of social or economic status. OER materials, easily shared and accessed online, are a great tool to discover and familiarise oneself with different perspectives. And finally, foster citizen science. Knowledge can be created by everyone and the availability of materials makes it easier for people to continue to gain knowledge. Next. So let's just take a closer look, starting with access. 
OER are available for everyone and can be disseminated rapidly, allowing for quick circulation, but they also allow for customization and adaptability for different learning needs and styles. Equity, life chances and choices are limited by many kinds of inequality, including social, income, racial, ethnic, gender and ability. Equity is a corrective process that demands fairness for marginalised and minoritized people by reducing gaps in opportunity and attainment through organised efforts. OER represent cost savings for students and institutions and are open for addressing the diversity and inclusion. They reduced inequality to education, which supports sustainable development goal four. So OER provides the freedom to educators to reuse, adapt, update, translate, and enhance existing learning materials. And so they can be adapted for specific contexts. So region, discipline, program, specific learners. The use and creation of OER provides opportunities for partnerships and collaboration. Um, students can become involved in co-creating learning materials and can contribute to public knowledge. So, for example, you can invite students to come, come to become producers and communicators of knowledge by asking them, you know, to edit a Wikimedia page or something along them lines. Next. So we're talking about OER and so I'd be really interested in seeing what is your favorite OER repository or tool? Have you used any that you really like? Um, and if you haven't used any repositories or tools or are not familiar with OER, that's fine as well. Just click on the link that's in the chat or take the QR code from the screen. And uh, here's another answer garden. And we'd love to know your favorites. And of course, if you haven't used any, that's fine too, because you're here to embrace the open. So hopefully you'll learn from the community on um, some of these resources. Okay, so I can see Merlot there. My eyesight is terrible. Um, and OER Commons, great. And OERSI, Axel will be pleased to see that, great. Haven't used any, great. So hopefully you're going to learn something um, today from us. Oasis, yep, not used any, yep, great. So that's really interesting. So it's great to see a mixture in the audience. So some people, Merlot and OER Commons are standing out um, the most in the bigger text and there's some other ones mentioned there as well and a few that haven't used any, so yeah. Great to see the mixture in the audience. So, um, yeah, we are Commons, Merlot, OERSI. Great. Okay, another second, and then um, you'll see there. So we'll be looking at some of these um, later on. So for those that don't haven't used any, um, we will be looking at them. And for those that have used and are familiar with some of these OER, you know, you can. Uh, come in and um, when we're doing the live demo and maybe give your tips and tips and tricks or drop them in the chat as well. So perfect. Okay, I think everybody's had time to fill in that answer garden. So um, we'll move on. Thank you. So um, the scale and availability of OER is ever expanding. New resources are being created and made available daily. And a current problem occurring out of this growth is that there is no single complete listing of all OER. So there isn't a single repository, tool or index from which to search all OER. And those that are available have varying coverage and search features. So a lot of them would have you know, the same functionality and um, maybe the same look and feel, but they may index different OER. Now, before we start looking at where to find OER, let's take a brief look at copyright and Creative Commons licenses. As to be deemed OER, a resource must have an open license or be in the public domain. Next. So what about copyright? Copyright is a legal term and an intellectual property right that provides legal protection for authors and creators that limits the ability for sharing and reuse. So if you wish to use a resource for which you are not the copyright owner, you must seek permission from the copyright owner or ensure that you comply with the specific terms of the relevant copyright license. Unless of course the resource is in the public domain and it's owned by us all basically. So by adding an open license to a resource, 
A creator can retain copyright, but permit specific forms of reuse. OER creators um, still retain full copyright of the resource they create, though. That's very important. So most OER is issued under an open license through Creative Commons. And Creative Commons is a non-profit organization that helps creators license and distribute their work. Licenses are designed to let others know how the work may be copied, shared, edited, remixed, and built upon. The licenses work within the confines of copyright law. Next. So Creative Commons licenses do not replace copyright. They build on top of it and allow the adoption of copyright terms to fit specific needs. So applying a CC license um, Creative Commons license to a work can be thought of as replacing all rights reserved with some rights reserved. And so I'm going to give a brief description of each of the licenses. Um, here you can see an, um, an image of the licenses up in the top left hand corner. Um, I'm going to start with the least permissive mentioned in CC0 first. And of course you can learn about CC licenses and use the license selector from the links on the screen or that Paolo will kindly share in the chat. So again, this is just a quick overview. So I'm just gonna mention um, each one of the licenses. So CC0 CC is a public domain dedication. It means that no attribution or credit is needed and you can adapt it and any way you want, even commercially, okay? So CCBY means you must give credit attribution to the original author. You can adapt and use it commercially, but attribution is not negotiable. CCBYSA is a CCBY license plus share alike, which means you must attribute it and share any adaptions you make with the same CCBY SA license, so exactly the same license if you change it. CCBYNC is a CCBY license plus non-commercial, which means you can use it with attribution, you can adapt it, but you cannot sell it for profit. Okay, I know if you haven't seen these licenses before, it's a lot to take in, but know you have them links and you'll get familiar with them images and uh, what the licenses um, allow. So CCBYNCSA is a CCBY plus non-commercial plus share alike, which means you can use it with attribution, you can adapt it, but you cannot sell it for profit and you must share it using exactly the same license, CCBYNCSA. Two more to go, CCBYND is CC BY plus no derivatives, which means you can use it with attribution, but you cannot adapt it. And then the final one is CCBYNCND. It's a CCBY license plus non-commercial plus no derivatives, which means you can use it with attribution, but you cannot adapt it or sell it for profit. Okay, next. So we advise that you search recognized OER repositories and collections to explore what already exists. So what you see on the screen are some of the more popular OER repositories and tools. And yes, there are more. So you'll notice um, some of the ones appear in there that are appeared in our answer garden. And you may see ones that you haven't seen before. So because the number of individual resources growing, some tools to search multiple resources have been developed. And we're going to look at some of these resources and tools more closely shortly. Next. OER search engines, databases, repositories, collections, tools, and indexes are terms used in the context of accessing and discovering OER. While these terms are often used interchangeably, they can have distinct meanings. So OER search engines are platforms specifically designed to search and discover OER. And so they function very like general search engines, 
but are made to focus on OER content. Searching an OER repository can result in a faster and more productive search experience as the resources have been curated and organized into various categories, including discipline, format, and license type. OER indexes and tools um, are tools that are provide structured lists or catalogs of OER. Okay, next. So, Perhaps the most useful first step when searching for OER is knowing what you are looking for. Are you looking for OER presentations that discuss plagiarism or maybe an introductory textbook on macroeconomics or maybe an interactive simulation on hydraulics and engineering? You know, it depends what discipline you're coming from. If you're a librarian, you know, you may be looking for something to do with referencing, copyright, plagiarism. So if you can narrow your search to a particular subject or discipline and have an idea of the type of content you are looking for, your search will be much easier. So ask yourself, what exactly am I looking for? And um, what are the key terms or concepts? So to start your search, take a few pre-planning steps or use a search strategy checklist before diving into the many search options available. AV is going to talk you through these steps now. Um, okay, so moving on to some search tips. Um, uh, when we search for OER, or when we support lectures, or uh, when we prepare content for our own use in teaching, it is important to help um, to help ourselves or others use some structure in order for us to capture uh, what we do, so that we can reflect later and revisit when needed to avoid duplication. Taking the time to plan our OER search is vital in the same way that student researchers need time and structure to plan their search for their thesis or dissertation or you know, other research projects. So we all need to identify topics, keywords based on learning objectives and outcomes and module and course, uh, course descriptions. Then uh, we need to decide on possible types of materials needed. Um, we can uh, always help. Uh, it's always handy to have a list of potential relevant repositories um, with us. And then we need to identify our selection criteria. We'll need to keep links of useful content um, identified. And the next step would be the next stage is to review this content. Um, when deciding some aspects to take into consideration, we may need to look into affiliation, author, quality control, peer review, currency, quality, type of license, accessibility, remix and editability. Uh, then lecturers or ourselves, we need to decide how we'll use the content and if we'll need to adapt it and share it. Um, so we need to look into licenses. Very often, these are collaborative decisions as we will help lecturers decide what they want to do, um, especially initially. Of course, we'll need time to reflect and then revisit later. Uh, however, when we revisit, the next time the course is to run, it will be useful to have evidence regarding all these stages, all these steps, so, so that we don't need to repeat the whole exercise. Uh, there is an example linked here on the slides um, of a hand for OERs and a useful list of repositories um, a linked to evaluation criteria and also rubrics. Um, and of course, the slides will be made available and um, you will be able to explore these links later. Uh, for, for example, to make it even simpler and summarize the steps, before starting your search, it's worth thinking about what exactly you're looking for, your search terms, the search tools you uh, you use to define your resource in the same way um, we research, for example, for journal articles. Some easy steps to take when looking for open content is know the discipline, know your discipline, decide on types of materials and format needed, identify a relevant um, repository, identify keywords related to your topic and learning objectives. It's always useful to start broad and then narrow down. 
adjust your search words if needed. Um, as with all research, it takes time. So very often we need to adjust. Uh, search OER repositories and databases for any relevant resources. Identify a rubric and review the resources you've located for feed, currency, accessibility, um, et cetera. Uh, keep track of good resources, bookmark them and save them. And many repositories give you the, um, the functionality to save them on, on the actual platform. Uh, remember always to consider licenses and decide accordingly what you're able to do, adapt, remix, etc. cetera. Um, and this will help in your decision-making as well. And then reflect, reflect on the materials you have located. And of course, as we said, repeat the exercise um, when needed. Thanks. Um, so for those of you that may not have used um, some of the repositories or tools yet, you probably are familiar with using Google and YouTube, you know, so you can easily search both Google and YouTube and some other search tools for OER with Creative Commons licensing. So I just have some screenshots here um, of the Google search and the YouTube search. So in Google, you need to use the Google advanced search page. It will only work in the advanced. And when you scroll to the bottom of that page, you click on the field that says usage rights. And then you change that usage rights field to free to use, share or modify or free to use, share or modify even commercially, depending on what type of license you want. And, and then you type in your search criteria and hit search and um, go through your results. OK, the results page should, of course, only show CC resources, but make sure um, you verify the exact license and terms of use because it's your responsibility. And obviously, make sure you give credit to the resources as well. In YouTube, type your key keywords in the search box and press return. Once the results appear, click on filters in the top right corner of the results. Under Features, tap Creative Commons to display only Creative Commons videos. And again, it's up to you to make sure that you have the correct um, licensing and cite it. OK, next. So choosing the right OER is important. You will want to use the best quality resource for your objective. OK, so when you're starting out, if you're using something like Google or YouTube, you might just be you know, having a quick look and feel of what's out there. But if you were, you know, working on, you know, something to do with the curriculum or, you know, in-house training, you want the best quality resource. So some repositories have reviews or a rating scale where users have shared their perception of or experience using the resource and which is really useful. OK, but you will probably want to complete your own evaluation. So some criteria for evaluating the quality of OER include accuracy, accessibility, appropriateness, clarity, reusability, relevance, currency, and authority. So watch out for red flags. Are there typos? When was the resource last updated? Do you need to update or adapt it? If so, have you got the time to do that? Or do you just want to have a resource that you can just literally reuse? So identify a verified checklist or rubric. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. And that's the whole point of OER. It's there already. So use what's there for you. Next. Since not all OER are created equal, though, um, you will need to use these rubrics and checklists. And there are several available to help you evaluate the quality and appropriateness of an OER. So on screen, there are four popular and fairly easy to use ones. And we will look at the BC OER faculty guide for evaluating OER in our upcoming activity. Um, but just um, for a quick checklist, um, OER Commons asks educators to build OER that are up to date and contain active URLs, are understandable and can be successfully used by others, su support sound pedagogical practice, advance professional learning and sharing, contain accurate and relevant content knowledge, and are developmentally and culturally appropriate. Okay, so just think about that um, when you're using OER. 
do the answer them questions for you. Okay, next. So it's demo time. I'm now going to give a live demo of some OE, sorry, OER repositories and tools. And let's hope there's no technical difficulties because AV has been doing a great job of turning the slides for me. So I have to do it myself now. Um, and then once I've done my live demo, AV will discuss some other repositories and platforms. And just to mention, we're delighted to have Axel here today, um, who is a member of the Libra Working Group on Educational Resources. And he's the technical coordinator of the OER SI repository. So I'm not giving a demo or talking about that repository because, as I said, Axel is here and um, we can hand it over to Axel. So, Axel, would you like to go first or will I give my demo? Which would you prefer? Oh, I think you can start and um, after that I will show you Perfect. a little bit of our approach. Lovely. Thank you, Axel. Okay. So I'll just share my screen now. Happy to have you, Axel. Thank you for joining. <laughs> Bear with me, guys. Yep, apologies. Okay, so can you see my screen? Okay, so I'm going to start with um, Creative Commons. Okay, so this is what um, the Creative Commons search portal looks like, and it lets you discover Creative Commons um, material. So it makes it um, easy um, to find um, resources from these sites that you see on the screen. So you can search for different types of media. And obviously, as we mentioned, knowing um, how you plan to use the media can help you in your search. So you can type in your keywords and then you need to select which site you're going to search. So you could search Flickr for media, SoundCloud for music, Vimo for videos, etc. cetera. Um, if you want to find different types of content, you can use the Google web tab um, and obviously remember to cite your sources when you use them. Okay, so um, to use this resource, let's say I'm just want to find something for our library blog. So I'm looking for a cute puppy. So if I type in cute puppy here, okay, and then say, well, what am I looking for? I'm going to look for maybe a video or an image. So I'm going to choose open verse. Okay. And um, you can choose whichever one is appropriate for you. I will choose open verse. And then when I hit search, you will see some cute puppies. OK, and so you can see in the top left, you've got images and audio. OK, I want an image for my blog so I can click on image. We have over 10,000. And then on the right hand side, these filters appear by default and it ticks um, use commercially and modify or adapt. OK, so you need to decide, you know, what it is you want to do with the image. And um, so you can say, well, actually, I want it to be in the public domain. So I can click on public domain. Um, and I'm not going to be modifying or adapting it. So um, you can work through them filters. You can look for image types. You can say, I want photographs or illustrations. You can say what extension you want. So what file format. You can look at the ratios, the sizes, and even the sources where the images are coming from. So it's really handy. You can go through that, tick as many <clears throat> or as few of them options that are relevant, of course, or you can just look at all the cute puppies on the screen and decide which one you're going to choose. OK, so I'm going to say, oh, this one eating his teddy bear looks quite cute. So I can click on the cute puppy. What do you want to do with it? Um, so if you scroll down, this is what I really like about open verse. So there's the cute puppy. He's perfect for my library blog. If I scroll down, you can get the image, okay? But before you do that, keep scrolling down and you can see here, credit the creator. So there's some rich text, there's HTML and there's plain text. And you can see that this image is in the public domain. So even though it's in the public domain, you know, it's still good practice to cite it. So you can copy this text and then get this image. So I click on get this image and it will bring me to the source where the image is found. In this case, it's Flickr. 
and um, here's my image. So now I have the source. For those of you who are not used to Flickr, um, the image opens like this. You can create um, a personal account so you can save your favorite images if you want to. If you don't want to do that, on the bottom right of the image, there's a star where you'd add it to your favorites. There's an arrow um, pointing right if you want to share it on social media. So if you're just using it you now for your own personal Twitter or Facebook or whatever it is, you can share it there. Or, of course, if you're um, using it in your own um, activity or blog or whatever it is, you can download the photo. So when you download this picture, it gives you the options and then download it and it's preparing the download for you. And then you have the information to cite it when you use it in your own um, material as well. OK, so I'm going through these quickly because I just want to give you a few to get a look and feel of them. So that's the CC portal. Next, we're going to take a quick look at OER Commons. And this is a public digital library of OER allowing users to explore, create and collaborate with educators around the world to improve curriculum. And it offers at the top here, as you see, you can discover, so you can discover resources, collections and providers, or you could go to hubs. So a hub is a customizable branded source uh, resource center where a network of users can create and share collections, administer groups and share news and events associated with their project. And then they also have groups as well. So they're collaborative workspaces and um, for creating, curating and discussing OER. So you don't need to register to discover OER, but if you want to use the hubs or groups, you would need to register, okay, and sign in. So um, I really like um, OER Commons as well. Um, you know, as with all resources, I have some favorite bits of all of them. So for OER Commons, let's say you are doing, um, you need to find something on plagiarism for a lesson or module um, that you're taking. OK, so you can just type in your keyword here. Sorry, I'm spelling it wrong. Um, so if I type in plagiarism and just do a quick search, I just want to show you how many um, resources you'll get just by typing in plagiarism. OK. And here, 325 results. So you can see straight away this filters on the left hand side and you can go in through them filters or what I like to do is go back and do an advanced search. So fine tune your search with our advanced search. So when I click on the advanced search, here's what the advanced search looks like. You type in your keyword again. Um, and again, I haven't spelt it right. <laughs> Apologies. Okay. And then before you hit search from the advanced screen, here's your additional search criteria. So there's loads of options here. You can look within a specific subject area. OK, you can say, um, what's its educational use? You can say, well, what material types am I looking for or what course where am I doing? So, you know, I'm looking for a lesson or a module on plagiarism. So I'm going to choose a lesson and module. And then I can say, well, I want it to have a teaching and learning strategy because what I want to do is for me to be able to develop my own lesson or module on plagiarism. So I'm going to get a teaching and learning strategy as well. And um, you can look at the types of media some reading materials and um, there's some member activity there so you can say I only want members ratings or tags or comments so you know if you really like OER and you create an account that may be something that you may want to look at there's more options on the right hand side so you can see if it's been evaluated using one of these rubrics which is really handy so you can say okay well I, I do want to see that it's been evaluated what kind of content source is it? Who are the primary users? Again, depends on what type of information you're looking for. There's the education level. So let's say I'm in a community college. So I want, you know, a lower division, a beginner's um, college on plagiarism. Media format. What are you looking for? Accessibility. Um, again, you can choose as many or a few of these options that are necessary. Um, importantly, the bottom one on the right before you hit search is your license type. So if you click license type, OK, it clicks them all automatically. OK, so just click on your arrow and say, well, I want just the public domain ones and the Creative Commons BY licenses. OK, again, you'll be doing the search. So you'll be thinking about what you actually need and what's permitted. 
So when you hit search, you should have a lot less results than the 325 that we found with the basic search. And in fact, we only have one result. And with all these filters that are shown on screen, okay, so you say, well, actually, I'm not just going to limit to one result. So maybe you don't have to run the search again, you see. You can say, well, actually, it doesn't have to be um, evaluated using the Achieve OER or the Equip Rubik. So you could take them out if you wanted to. Let's just see if it adds any more in. I'm just showing you what you can do with your results. OK, so now we have four results. And so you can scroll down and look at the titles and say, oh, I'm going to take a look at a few of these. So I'm going to look at the top one, which is avoiding plagiarism. When I click on it, um, it's just open in here. So at the top, it shows me what my resource looks like. It shows me what it's called. It's given it some stars and some ratings. And it shows me how many times um, this um, resource has been viewed and saved. OK. And then, of course, it has the description. So what's included? So you can go through that and say, well, actually, this is really useful. This is exactly what I was thinking of doing, you know, for my lesson or module on plagiarism. Um, your evaluations and reviewers are on the right hand side. So you say, well, who is OER Colorado that's reviewing it? I can click and it will tell me um, who they are. OK, so it's a seal of improvement. And then the evaluations are down on the right. So, um, you know, the quality um, of the explanation, the quality of assessments, the quality of technical technological in interactivity, it has your evaluations and tags there. So, you know, you will spend time going through that. I'm just going through this quickly. But let's say, oh, this resource looks really good. I'm going to take a look at it. I click view resource or there's some icons on the right. I can share it or if I'm logged in, I can save it. In this instance, I'm going to view it. So when I review the resource, it will link out to where the resource is hosted. In this case, it's in this online writing lab. And here's what the resource looks like. If you're familiar with H5P, this is a H5P resource. So it tells you um, what's included in the resource. And then to reuse it or share it, you need to go into the resource. So if you click Next, OK, this is what the resource looks like. And you can see here, you can reuse it or embed it. So if you're reusing it, you would, um, if I just show you here, you download it as a H5P file, and then um, you'd create your account if you haven't got one for H5P, and then you can edit and use that um, that material if you know if it has the correct license that you can do that, um, and if not, you can just embed it so it's exactly the same so there are your options okay or you can print it out here as well so there's printing and downloading instructions there as well to help you okay so that's a quick look at um oer commons and just quickly now i'm just conscious of the time this is what oasis looks like i'm actually not going to um do a search on it because i'm conscious of the time and i want axel to have time and av to have time to show some resources as well and talk about resources and um, but again this is a nice resource to look at you can do your keyword search in the search box on screen or else at the top you can search by source or by oer subject which is really handy um, so this resource, if I scroll down to the bottom, has 115 sources, 455,000 records, and it has um, institute 515 institutions linking to Oasis. So you can see what other institutions are linking to Oasis. And then, excuse me, <coughs> it breaks it down by material type. So you can say, well, I'm looking for an interactive simulation on maths or on engineering. Or you can just click on records to see all the records and that will bring you straight into a search page with your filters on the left. OK, I'm not doing a search because I haven't got time, but I just want to point out to you one of the really nifty icons within Oasis is at your results screen. Obviously, I was never going to look through 455,000 results. That's the whole um, repository. But this little book with the magnifying glass lets you search within these results. So once you've used the filters on the left hand side, you can then search within these results as well, which is really handy. Um, so that's it for my quick demo of them three sites. Um, I'm going to hand you over now. So Axel, maybe if you want to come in. Um,
and yes anything? thank you yeah, so perfect thank you um maybe i can also start and share my screen yeah, to I'm, absolutely show you our approach and just to begin with a uh, short introduction of myself so my name is axel klinger from tib in hanover germany i'm in the university library which is also a scientific library in hanover and we started a few years ago with a regional repository for open educational resources in lower saxony one part of germany where we created a repository um, for higher educational um, oer and when we started with this initiative, um, we also saw there were also some other initiatives in Germany, and we tried to bring them all together to make them findable in one place, instead of having a list of repositories where you have to click to each of those, those repositories. And that was why we created this OER search index, um, just with the abbreviation um, EARTHY. And um, this is what it looks like. And opposite to some of those general approaches, this is focused on higher educational OER, and we wanted to separate it a little bit from the school OER and um, some other um, general OER. So this is uh, also based on a subject classification for higher education, which is a little bit more detailed than the other approaches, I think, in um, OER Commons or OASIS. So you can go to the engineering science, for example, into the um, down to three levels of um, classification and find all your materials uh, that are available in these um, subjects. We have a similar um, filtering mechanism as all the other search engines have. And for example, um, a lot of providers, which is about 40 providers compared to Oasis with more than 100, but this is, um, as mentioned before, focused on higher educational um, repositories. So. Another aim of this approach was to be as flexible as possible and have, have an open source product where we can easily um, adapt any other resources as well. And it's also possible to suggest um, new repositories that we should consider to connect to um, the ERC. If you just go to the um, footer of the section um, to the contact form and write us a short note, this would be an interesting um, repository to consider for integrating in RC. Uh, so it's very flexible to do this. All the um, development as open source project is um, also linked in the footer at the um, section of GitLab or the documentation. And there you can find the current approach, uh, the project planning and so on as well. So similar to the other approaches, we have um, a detailed section if you go to one of those um, items and you will find some details directly on the page of uh, inside of Earthy. You could also embed those materials by just copying the section and putting it into uh, any kind of HTML code. It's also possible to integrate it into um, learning management systems, as far as they accept um, HTML embeddings, for example, and therefore you could use all those materials. Um, the main goal was to harmonize all the metadata from different um, repositories. So we tried to map all those fields for subject, uh, for resource types, for subject headings, for example, also for the licenses. Um, here it's also available to select different licenses. Uh, mostly of them are um, CC Common, uh, Creative Commons licenses, but we also have some of those resources in other licenses as well. For example, software development licenses like MIT or um, Apache or GPL are more and more interesting if people share their resources on platforms like GitHub or GitLab. So we get more and more resources that are stored in um, version control systems where you can get all the um, resources in the working um, space of um, GitHub, for example, and there you can collaborate on the resources directly instead of having just a repository where people upload their materials and it's also only possible to download it and to reuse it. Um, here it's more the focus on collaboration on um, open educational resources. For example, open textbooks that are published on GitHub could be directly um, contributed to uh, in those repositories. Uh, if you do, go to one of those images directly, you will jump into um, the targeting system or the repository behind this, and you will leave, of course, um, the OER search index. Just showing the details will go, stay in RC, but if you go to the images, you will jump directly to the different platforms. 
So other filters that we also have on um, the site is that we can filter by authors. And here it's also possible because there's a long list of um, filters and that's mostly difficult um, in other repositories to find them. For example, if I type, start typing, it will reload all the section and I can find even if there are 10,000 of um, authors integrated in this um, easily one of those authors. The same is um, possible for institutions. So let's say if I just start um, typing in um, our hometown, which is Hanover, um, it will just show me all the uh, institutions in Hanover. There are different universities um, listed below, and I can um, directly select one of them, see how many resources um, they do have. And if I go to one of them, like the um, Leibniz University in Hanover, I can also see which subjects do they cover with open educational resources? So if I'm looking for regional um, resources like courses or um, other things that are relevant for me as a learner or even as a teacher. And last but not least, um, we have a lot of languages that are supported. And if I go to um, one of those searches, just as an example, and the search for, let's say, climate change, I will find um, all the resources that are available or climate change. And I will find them even in different languages because we have a language mapping between this. So the aim of this um, search engine is also to be um, multilingual or international. And therefore I will find the same materials um, in English as I could also um, search in German with Lima, Wandel, for example. And this will also be uh, 340 eight results on climate change. And later on, I can um, choose which language I want um, the target material to select. So let's say um, if I'm traveling around Europe or um, studying for half a year in another country, I can prepare on one of those topics uh, with a similar content of um, learning resources that I also have at my hometown, for example. So yeah, this is a brief overview of um, the OER search index. And um, let's say, um, some words about the reusage of um, Ursi. So Ursi has also an API that is um, reusable to integrate it into other websites. Our own repository, which is twillo.de, um, just uses the search of Ursi as a component within the website to display all the results um, here as um, it's also shown in the Ursi. I'm sorry, I have a little dog, which is a little bit noisy here. <laughs> so that I will just um, start my sharing and uh, yes, open for answer uh, for Thank questions. Thank you. Thank you, Axel. Fantastic. Wonderful. Um, can I just say that um, I think I'm going to bring the break um, to now. So time for a five minute break, everyone. Um, grab a coffee, stretch your arms and legs, walk for a bit. Um, and we'll meet in five minutes exactly. And of course, you'll have the opportunity to ask Axel questions um, um, later. Um, thank you. So um, 10 minutes past, we're going to, or maybe 11, uh, we'll uh, start again. Thank you, Axel. Um, okay, so uh, welcome back, everyone. Um, we are ready to continue. Um, so we will, won't have time to go in more depth um, with um, the other three repositories. But very briefly, I would like to mention um, that Merlot is an important one. Um, it, um, it, is, it started as a consortium. Um, and um, almost 100 campuses um, are involved here, over 900,000 students um, uh, and 47,000 faculty contribute here. So 23 systems and institutions um, are included. So 91,000 materials in this uh, particular database. So I would like you to, repository, so I would like you to have some time to, to ask you to have some time to explore. It's very easy to use. Um, it is very popular because, especially because of its peer review function. Um, I would like to, and I'll ask um, Paola to share um, the link in the chat. 
I would like to highlight the Online Learning Consortium Conference, Innovate, which comes out of Merlot, and it's offered virtually in April this year, 23rd um, to 25th. Um, so please have this in mind in case you would like to attend. Um, the next um, uh, repository is the Mason OER MetaFinder. This comes out of George Mason University, a leader in the creation, curation, and use of OERs. Um, it um, searches simultaneously 22 different open educational databases, a real-time federated search, um, includes Hathi Trust, DPLA, Internet Archive, New York Public Library, Digital Collections, and more. Um, there are some links on this slide, and you can always access these later um, because the slides will be made, made available. One link um, includes a video, uh, a tutorial for Mason OER MetaFinder, which I, I would recommend that you uh, watch. Um, and also have a link to the Stern Center for Teaching and Learning. Uh, this again comes out of Mason. Um, and if you want to explore it further, um, it supports faculty, but also um, educators um, become learning designers from teaching communities, achieve quality and development in their teaching. Um, and um, also it, um, it talks about research evidence-based pedagogies. So something to explore. Uh, the last one in my list is OpenStax. Um, it is a part of Rice University. Uh, all textbooks here are peer-reviewed, openly licensed. Um, they, as they say, they're 100% free. Um, it offers beautiful web webinars, trainings, and so on. So it's quite um, um, easy to find material to explore this resource uh, further. Um, one impressive number to share here is that 70% uh, of higher education institutions in the US use OpenStax. So 7 million students use OpenStax. So impressive um, a resource and one definitely to explore. Um, I would like um, to pass on to Capri now. Thanks, Avi. So um, now it's your turn. We haven't got much time because as usual, we've gone a bit over, but what we want you to do is, you know, just a couple of minutes and we have on the screen here for you to choose a tool or repository, search it, evaluate it and reflect. Okay, we're not gonna have enough time for that. So what we're going to ask you to do is choose one of the repositories or tools that we discussed. So RC, Oasis, Merlot, OER Commons, or one of the resources that you may have used yourself before, and just search and identify a suitable OER for teaching a topic in your discipline area or find an acute image like I did um, in my first demo. But or alternatively, if you can't think of what you need to search for, um, try a topic related to supporting students. So maybe look for something to do with information literacy or Bloom's taxonomy. OK, so this is a really uh, focused search for a small OER. So, yes, you will be finding textbooks and courses, but for this really quick exercise, um, we just advise you to select a more granular, smaller resource. So maybe a course material or a student guide, so a handout or an image. OK, um, so you can go online there while I'm speaking, if that's OK, and um, choose your, um, your um, repository or tool and start searching. So the next two steps would be evaluate it and reflect it, which you can do in your own time afterwards, okay? Um, what we want to do in this session is just we're going to open up a Padlet and just get um, your feedback. So we won't have the feedback for the evaluation or reflection at this stage, okay, because we don't have enough time. But, you know, it'd be great if you could use the Padlet afterwards to think about, um, you know, the evaluation. And what we, we're going to put up on the next slide, um, AV, if you want to put it up, is the BC OER Faculty Guide for Evaluating OER. So we were just going to ask you to look at the first two. So if you're going to continue doing this after this workshop, um, it's just the top two that we'd want to make reference to um, in the Padlet and reflect. So why did you select that repository? Did you find it difficult? OK, so I hope you're searching away there on one of the repositories or tools. And um, if you want to share the Padlet, Avi, that would be great.
there's a, um, a QR code there um, and there's a Padlet. So um, it'll just take a few minutes if you want to, um, for, you know, for those who are maybe use these resources before, you probably might be a bit quicker at finding the resources. To those who are new to OER, it may take longer. But as I said, this is just to get you to have a look and feel of some of the repositories and tools that are there and see if you can find any. Um, perfect. So if you can just, um, yeah, there's a repository there. So um, I really like Oasis and I've used it before to find good quality OER to support information literacy skills training. It's easy to search for specific formats. Um, I don't like the advanced search on Oasis, okay? I find it easier to do a basic search and then filter my results. Okay, so that's interesting. So, um, yes, yeah, so, I mean, again, if you don't have time in the session to add any comments to the Padlet, don't worry about it. The Padlet will be there after the workshop for you to add, um, you know, share your OER, OER experiences, highlighting maybe what worked and what didn't. And um, I, there's just um, under each of the um, entries, there's some stars. So you can rate um, what you think of that information. Was it helpful or not? So you can do that as well, rate other people's um, when they appear. So maybe we'll just reload once more. And I know it's a bit rushed, um, but we were just trying to, you know, cover a, a lot of information to get you to see the different. Um, uh, and Catherine, different... Yeah. just to say that to add here, you just need to click on the plus, yeah? Okay, you need yeah. to click on the plus to add it. Or, I, or you can click anywhere, can you, as well, on the thing? Yep, yeah. you just click on the plus there and it pops up. It's anonymous, so, um, you know, unless you add your name as well. So click on the plus. Type in your subject, so maybe, you know, which repository you looked at, and then add a bit of information underneath on um, the repository or two. Okay. So if there's nothing coming through, and we won't spend any more time on this, as I said, we didn't, uh, you know, um, it's a bit rushed anyway, but we wanted to get that tool in, um, that activity in for you to have a go at. And I, we will be looking at the Padlet later on, so hopefully, you will get to add um, your experience of that quick activity. And, you know, even if you don't do it today, just think of that activity again in the future when you're looking for OER. Um, you know, think of, you know, I need to search it and I need to identify it, evaluate it and reflect on what I found, okay? And so that BC OER um, guide is, you know, really useful along with them other checklists and, um rubrics that we shared earlier on. Okay, so thank you. Uh, okay, moving on. Um, there are many challenges and also fears we may experience when starting with OERs. Often fear derives from lack of information and understanding of OERs. What are some of the reported challenges and obstacles when trying to implement, implement and embed OERs in higher education curricula? There are um, um, reported, and maybe we can just go through the list here, alignment with the institutional policies, lack of awareness of OER, lack of technical skills. Uh, people report lack of available support, understanding of licenses, comparison with publishers' content, time, effort to adapt, um, quality of OER resources, stability of content, keeping the resources updated, print availability, access beyond the term and language barriers. My view on this is that the more we educate ourselves in OER, the more we'll see that these obstacles will be dissolved. This page is linked um, here, and I would like to ask um, pa uh, Paolo to share this page and help you answer some of these concerns uh, when discussing OERs in your institutions and can help uh, dissolve um, uh, these misconceptions because many of these um, in the screen are misconceptions. Evie, sorry to interrupt you, but we have a question from the oh, audience. Yes. yes yeah. We have a question in the chat from Casper asking, not having experiences with these dedicated OER repositories, I'm guessing they overlap. And as a follow up, do they harvest posts from each other? 
Okay, I need to see this. Is it in writing? Can I just see? Yes, this? yes, it's in the chat. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can also involve Axel. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, so. Yes. Thank you. Yes, Alex, please, please step <laughs> of course, in. just a few words from our side. Um, as we started to um, harvest um, different repositories, especially from Northern America, um, we found that there were a lot of overlaps, and we yeah, tried to um, deduplicate all those entries as far as they have the same idea, let's say, um, a URL or something that's um, unique, and therefore we were able to. Um, point out from which repositories we got those resources. But of course, there's also the difficulty that we have to uh, choose whether the one or the other repository should um, deliver the metadata for one of those resources, even if we can point out that it's from different resources because they differ sometimes um, regarding descriptions or other information. But um, yes, of course, and I think it's um, especially from the um, US repositories that they have a lot of overlap between OpenStax, BC Campus, um, eCampus Ontario, and so on, that we found out. In Germany, we don't have um, those um, overlaps because most of the resources are um, inside of repositories. So uploaded mm -hmm. to one of those repositories, but not uploaded in another one. And it's not just um, that we point to different repositories, but we store it in one place. Yes, yeah. Thank you, Axel. Mm -hmm. Um, fantastic. Um, shall we um, move on? And I don't know if we have time for this. It's another um, answer garden. Um, and this is um, to invite you to share uh, in this link some of your own challenges you're facing that results to you not using OER. Um, And maybe, for example, I have time here, but what are some challenges you're facing that results to your um, not using OER? I would like to ask you to invite you to um, uh, share an answer here. Yes. Accuracy, permission. Time, I think time becomes bigger, so it means many people have you know, added that. Let's see if we have any other responses here. Where to begin? Okay. Uh, we hope that after today, um, you will be braver to begin. Um, reuse is a nightmare. Accuracy, old material. Okay, okay. Thank you for sharing. Right. Um, any other comments, everyone? Yes, maybe just a few words about this, uh, because time is often yes. an issue for um, yeah. teachers to create OER. We started to create an OER tutorial on quick how to quick start on open educational resource creation. And I will share a link in, for this um, oh, fantastic. also here in the chat. Thank you. And Thank you, we Axel. also try um, some different approaches, how to make it as easy as possible to get some kind of five minute quick start on practical creation of um, open educational resources. And maybe that's, um, that could help. Fantastic. That's very, that's very useful. Thank you. Um, and thank you for sharing everyone. Um, uh, we are moving on and would like to share with you, with Catherine, where we are with OERs in our institutions, and we will very briefly present our institution cases. Um, let me make a start. So um, my institution, Anatolia College and the American College of Thessaloniki in Greece, is an old American missionary school founded in 1886. Um, I don't know if you can see my screen, um, my video, but behind me, there's a photo of my library. Um, it's the Bissa Library. We are celebrating 100 years in Thessaloniki this year. So we have digitized and shared archives collections, mainly historical photos. They can be found on, in the Internet Archive, linked from our website as well. Um, our institutional repository, we are upgrading everything. It's going to be our next big project. Uh, we established a librarian role to support um, open access and OERs um, services. And we've started offering support and we created content online. There is. Um, uh, there is a link here on the page of our lead guide. Um, we are currently working with two faculty members on open textbooks and OERs. 
um, and we're building best practice cases uh, and we plan to share these with our academic community here in the next few months um, in an event. Uh, we're also preparing marketing materials, posts, communications to alert our community to these uh, possibilities. Uh, and over to you, um, Catherine. Um, so I'm just looking at the clock. So quickly, I'll just say that we use LibGuides and we have our own institutional repository and we have some reusable learning objects, including videos, podcasts and tutorials. So if anybody's interested in any of that, they can contact me directly. But um, I'm just conscious of the time and people have uh, work to get back to. So next, please, um, AB. Mm. We might go uh, to the next one, will we? Yeah. Yes. Um, Catherine. Okay. So sorry, guys, that it was a bit rushed towards the end, but whether you're a curator, creator, facilitator, champion, or just curious, get involved, contribute, exchange, and engage with your community of learners and educators through online forums, social media groups, and educational community communities. There are plenty. You are not alone. Reach out to an OER expert near you if you need help finding OER. Seek recommendations and insights from colleagues so they and you can share experiences of specific resources. Sign up for community of practice emails and advocate for OER in your institution. So on the screen, we have shared some resources that we find valuable. And I will, of course, point out the enroll resources for librarians and OE enthusiasts. So members of our community collaboratively create resources and collect links to key documents that can support librarians and OER advocates. And we also have a wakelet page as well that we are constantly updating and adding links to. So if you would like to join our network and to take action to foster the development of policy to support and expand OER, you can get in touch with Paolo, who's the Spark Europe OE Community Manager, and Spark support systems for research and education that are open by default and equitable by design. So please do um, check out OER communities near you and get in touch with us. Okay. You're on mute, Avi. Um, okay, so we have a summary of what we've tried to achieve today. I'm not going to go through, but this is um, it here. Um, I would like to say um, to invite you all to continue to support and engage with OERs because it matters for equity, for access and student success. Um, I would like to say also thank you all very much for participating and for supporting OERs. Your work matters. I would, like, I would like to give my special thanks to Spark, to the wonderful Paola Corti, and also to my lovely co-presenter, Catherine um, Briggs, and of course to Axel for joining us today. I would like to, to say that we'll be staying um, for a, bit, a bit longer if people have questions, uh, but um, I think um, uh, this is all from our part. Thank you, Abby, and thank you, Catherine, and thank you to all participants for their contribution, and th special thanks to Axel, who joined us uh, in between different meetings, so I'm very grateful for that. We have uh, other uh, webinars upcoming, so if you just want to continue learning together with us and uh, with uh, great librarians, and maybe if you want to consider joining uh, the group, we are open for everyone who is interested to, to progress with open education. So thanks again, and I'm stopping the recording now, but you can stay longer if you want to uh, ask questions, okay? Thanks again, Catherine. Thanks again, Abby, thanks, and guys. thanks, Axel. Bye, everyone.